Okay, this is the third and final routine in this little series devoted to a magical shuffle called the Bessie 1-1 Shuffle, okay? And within this shuffle, we'll talk about the mathematics behind all of this, all three routines, okay? So what we need here is a random card chosen by the spectator. So just tell me when to stop. Stop there, okay? So this will be your card. There you go, four of spades. Now, I ordinarily, I would not see this, right, as the performer. Uh, I don't have a spectator here, of course, so we're all gonna have to see it. Uh, but that is the card they're remembering. Now what we need is we need two equal size piles. And just from a practical point of view, it's nice to have somewhere between five and 10 cards in each. Otherwise things can just take too long. So what I thought we would do is go ahead and just uh, go with nine cards in each. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we have nine cards in each. And if you were here, you could actually mix these, three, six, nine, make sure. Um, you can mix these as much as you would like. This truly is a shuffled deck of cards. Okay. And so now what I need you to do is I need you to kind of reach out using your intuition and place your card on top of either pile. It's a free choice. So maybe they'll place it right here. That's fine. And then we'll bury your card underneath the other set of nine cards. Okay. Now from here, what I need you to do is cut any number, well, any number less than nine. We don't want to cut off more than half the cards, but cut any number of cards from the top that you like. So maybe, I think that's less than nine. I guess we'll find out <laughs> uh, in a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate this um, remarkable shuffle called the Bessie One One, okay? So you take the top and then the bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, last one goes on top. Okay, so that's the Bessie one, one. Now, if you've watched the previous routines, we've had to interpret what this special shuffle is telling us in terms of instructions to help us find your freely chosen card, okay? And it involved these cards here that were cut freely. And it looks like you cut quite a few. <laughs> you cut six of them. So uh, I think, so let me just use a little bit of psychic probing here to see kind of what the cards are telling me to do this time to, to find your card. Um, well, the first thing they're telling me to do is for each card here, I need to throw away a card from the top. Okay, in fact, we're going to throw them away in a rather violent manner. In fact, what we're going to do is I have this a little container of boiling hot water. Now, I don't know if you've seen what happens to cards when they're set in boiling hot water, but it's kind of amazing, actually. It's a little scary. Okay, so what these cards, I believe, if I'm, if I'm interpreting this correctly, what they're telling me to do is remove the top six cards here. And I'm just hoping that these aren't yours because otherwise they're going to be at the bottom of the sea in just a few minutes here. I think that's five and then six. Oh, golly. Can you see them floating? Floating to the bottom there. Uh, okay. Well, has that helped me identify your card or have I just lost it? in the molten lava here on the left. Well, let me just see. Uh, we've had your card appear in multiple places, if you remember. Routine one, it seemed like it was brought to the top. Uh, routine two, I think it was brought to the bottom. Do you remember that? And I don't know which one is the case here. Um, but one thing I've discovered is there are times when you need a helper procedure to make clear what it is the cards were trying to communicate. They told, told me to do this, but I don't think I have a clear picture as to how I'm supposed to now finish and find your card. I have no idea as to where it is. So what has often worked is to use the evil twin to the Bessie one one. It's called the Charlie one. And often those two together can achieve some spooky 
inexplicable magic, okay? So let me just show you the uh, Charlier one, and it may or may not help us this time. It has in the past, but not always, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and show it to you. This is a shuffle that I've used on my channel, so I'm not making this up here. So you push the top card over, the bottom goes to the top, top here goes to the bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom. That is the Charlier one. And often that will just kind of help clarify things. Okay, so let me just get, let me concentrate and get a feel for what it is I need to do to finish here. You have to realize I haven't seen any of the faces of the cards. I mean, suppose, right, you know, we're, you have to realize that when you go to do this, you will not know what the spectator's card is, okay, or where it is here. Okay, let me think. Well, let me feel here. Okay, I'm getting a strong psychic impression to perform the Bessie 1-1 a second time. But we've got to do it in a fully committed way. Hmm, what, what does that mean, a committed way? Oh, wait a second. I think I know what it means, and I'm not too happy about it. I think what it means is, as I perform this, Cards that are discarded need to go into the pot here, to a watery grave. Okay, well, the Bessie one one is one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, <laughs> one from the top, one from the bottom, and then, oh, we only have one card left. Oh, these are, I really hope your card's not in there. Okay, let's just pray that I've read, I've picked up on all of the important signals here I've been receiving that are meant to guide me perfectly to finding your freely chosen card. Let's see if we succeeded. Oh, we did indeed. Now, of course, uh, you uh, would not necessarily know that, the, that this is their card. We know it is because we uh, saw it at the beginning. Uh, but the spectator will know that this is their card in the end. Okay, wow, that was a little bit scary there. There was considerably more tension in this performance because we committed ourselves and there's no backing out here. Uh, these cards are, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> these cards are goners. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Can you see that? Once you really get it going, it turns... Oh, wow, look, check that out. Oh, golly, what happened there? These cards uh, separate. They're actually made of two pieces of paper. I don't know if you knew that. So there's like two pieces of paper together. And there's the other one. And uh, everything goes black. I don't know if you can see the water here, but it's gone as black as night. I can't even see through it. It looks like the blackest ink that's ever been produced. Oh, golly, look at this mess. Okay, well, I sure hope it was worth our while destroying these. Um, I just did what the cards kind of nudged me to do, and I would have to agree that they pointed me in the right direction. We found your freely chosen card. Okay, so that is the last routine here. That's the third one. I promised I would talk about the mathematics here. Now there was at least one twist to each of the performances, uh, but I'm going to talk about the underlying, you know, the main driving principle that allows you to do all three of these, okay? And it really is pretty remarkable that it works out this way, that the Bessie one one shuffle has this property. Okay, so, um, so we have you create two equal size piles. And then we had, um, if you think back to the first routine, uh, we had you uh, place that card, the freely chosen card, on top of either one of these piles of N cards. N is just representing how many cards there are. And then this one with the asterisk is the spectator's you know, special card. So the way to read, in fact, let me point out that um, I will add a link in the description below to something called B brackets. Okay, so this is something that Norman Gilbreth used and maybe some others as well. I've actually modified his notation here, but uh, this is a way to kind of represent what's going on within certain mathematical card effects. And it really is the way to understand this particular effect, okay? 
So the brackets here, uh, the brackets just denote a packet of cards. Okay, so um, if you want to picture n is nine, that would be fine. So you have like a bracket and then nine, and then we have this one asterisk, that's the spectator's card. There's just one of those, right? And then nine for n again, okay? So we have a pile of nine cards with the spectator's card on top of the other pile of nine. Now we did it a little differently today because what I did was I first, I actually stacked this one on top of that one, okay? And that's going to be equivalent to what we're going to show you right now. Because what I had you do is just cut any number of cards from the top, right? Well, if you're cutting from the top and these have all been stacked together, it's like just cutting from this first packet of nine. Okay, and then I think we cut um, six cards, didn't we? Right, we had six cards that were were cut by the spectator freely. Okay, so mathematically, what that will, will do is this number here will be decreased by how whatever number of cards you've cut. So if this is nine and then we cut six, that would be nine minus six. So this would actually be three in here in our particular application. And then over here, this would be the number of cards cut, which we cut six and they would be set on top of the spectator's special card and then on top of the nine other cards from that first pile, okay? Now, this is the magic that makes it work mathematically here. So what we do is we leave the representation for the first pile as is. So it's gonna be the pile size minus how many cards you remove from there, that's how many are left in that pile. What we do here, from here to here, those are actually the exact same thing, but just written in a different way. Okay, so if you look at, okay, so the way to read this, let me just put a little bracket here. The way to read this is we have uh, the number of cut cards on the top of the packet. Below that is the spectator's card. And then below that we have the other nine cards, right? The, the cards from the the one pile that we stack things on top of. Well, if you look at this quantity here, n minus x, if you take this number and add it to x, you see, we have a minus x and then a plus x. They cancel out. So this really is equivalent. This is exactly equal to n. It's exactly the same as that, that n right there. Okay, now the reason for doing it is because of what the Bessie one one shuffle does. Okay, so this is where the genius comes in because what it will do, the Bessie one one, so, you know, focus on this pile, you know, we're gonna deal with those cards later. We'll really just focus on this other pile. The Bessie one one is going to take one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, okay? Until we move all of the cards, right? And since we remove a top card first, we're gonna go through all of these, we'll be like one step ahead here, and then we'll get rid of those, okay? So the, by the time we've gotten rid of the top ones here, the X cards, we'll have just one more left here and then it will be gone. We'll actually get down to our spectator card being drawn off from the top, and then there's still cards here. Bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Well, what that does is it actually moves all of the cards that are below right here, these cards below the spectator's card. It moves that quantity of cards above the spectator card, okay? And then these cards down here, or up here, these cards up here actually get moved to the bottom. That's why we get x plus x is 2x, okay? So with a little bit of exploration, you can uh, see that this is actually what happens when we perform the Bessie 1-1 shuffle on a packet that has this structure right here. It really is equivalent to just switching places. This quantity moves up here and the x moves down and gets combined with the x there, giving us 2x total. And then at that point, you can see the equality. The number of cards above the spectator's card will be exactly the same quantity of cards 
as we have left in the remaining cards that weren't cut by the spectator. Okay, and so these quantities are guaranteed to be equal no matter what the packet size is, as long as you have equal packet sizes at the beginning. And you set the spectator's card on one of them and then stack the other pile on top, okay? So the spectator's card is n minus x cards from the top of the second pile. Therefore, the number of cards in the first pile is the same as the number of cards above the spectator's card in the second pile. So now if you go back to each of the routines, you'll see that that's the driving principle. The cards that were not cut, that same quantity of cards will be found above the spectator's card. And so I just gave three different ways of presenting or taking advantage of that information to create three pretty different looking routines that are actually all based on the same underlying principle. So anyway, that is the driving mathematical principle behind this. And it is something special to the Bessie 1-1 one, one shuffle. Because if we had performed a Klondike shuffle, and you can test this, it will not turn out this way. The quantity of cards here not cut will not match the quantity of cards above the card of interest, above the spectator's card. So the Klondike shuffle will not do this for you, but the Bessie 1-1 one, one does. So in that sense, I think it's quite a remarkable, almost magical shuffle just because of this very unusual and rare property here. So I appreciate you watching and um, encourage you to take a look at the other routines if you haven't seen them. Now in the routine today, what I did was, if you remember the discard pile by the spectator, the one that they kind of cut and removed, we threw inside the watery grave over here, right? And then I also threw a part, I threw away that same number from above the spectator's card into this bowl. Well, technically at that point, the spectator's card is at the very top, okay? And it'll always be there. Um, and in routine one, you know, I kind of took advantage of that in a, kind of in a different way than we did here. In routine two, also did a, took advantage of this fact in a different way. What I did in this one was with the card on top, and since we have an odd number of cards, you can see two times X, that's even, plus one, that's an odd size packet. The Charlier one, which is what I showed you, always moves the top card to the middle position of an odd size packet. I guess I can include a link to that as well in the description below that talks about odd size packets. And then once it's in the middle position, this Bessie 1-1 one, one brings it to the top. I mean, that's wonderful. Another wonderful property of this Bessie 1-1 one, one shuffle is the middle card for any odd size packet rises to the top if you perform the Bessie 1-1 one, one shuffle once, okay? And so that's why we were able to throw away, you know, the top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, until we had just one card remaining, the lone survivor right here. And we're guaranteed that this is the spectator's card and that it's not going to be destroyed in the container of death over here. This one's going to be safe. Okay. Well, very good. So I encourage you to um, take a look at other videos that are linked in the description below. And and also look for other videos that you find of interest on the Absolute Math Magic channel.